I remember once diving the northernmost islands of the Galapagos, Darwin Island and Wolf Island, you know, islands that Darwin actually never had been to before. But it's a land before time. I mean, it's like land before humans got there. And I remember this giant whale shark came by, and then a pot of dolphins came by. You know, this is back when you shot film. And the whole frame was just filled with wildlife. And this dolphin came swimming from behind the front of the whale shark, and it grabbed this tuna, and it brought it and looked right at me and shook it. And it swallowed it tail first down its throat. And I thought, you know, this is when you want 37 pictures on a 36 roll of film. It's just magical, absolutely magical. As underwater photographers, photojournalists really, we're documenting a time and a place that in the future may not be there. And the clock is moving. The first photographs I shot on the assignment for National Geographic, 1960, I took a total of seven or eight frames on two and a quarter square film, on ectochrome film, and butted them together. It was the first underwater color panorama ever done on the reefs. And this one I came back in 1989. The beautiful barrier reef forest went to hell. Now I'm looking around and saying, well, what happened here? It's not so far off from what happened 65 million years ago. Extinction is often being driven by direct human activity, things like habitat destruction or overfishing. And then there's global climate change, which is happening in a different way. So we have these sort of dual things, like the direct hand of man and the indirect hand of man and the change of climate. Climate is controlled by the oceans. The oceans are the big guys, they're in control. And the oceans now are slowly changing. And that is the danger we face today. A mass extinction is driven by a change of the environment. And we are changing the environment precisely along the lines that can trigger off one of these great catastrophes. There's been five mass extinctions, and they've had different causes, but there's been one common factor in all. A massive increase in carbon dioxide. And you've never had a carbon dioxide spike like it's happening now. We are burning through the fossil fuels laid down over hundreds of millions of years, really reversing geological history, basically, and we're doing it really, really fast. In the Gulf oil spill, about 4.9 million barrels of oil were spilled. That represents about a quarter of what we use every single day in the US. You look at an event like the Gulf oil spill, and you think this is the biggest environmental catastrophe in America ever. But that spill is nothing compared to the damage caused by us doing everyday things we don't even think about. And I'm more guilty than anyone. The worst thing you can do to the environment is make a film about it. This looks really cool. We did a carbon assessment of the first two years of production, and I was horrified at how much energy it takes to do what I do. Sweet. We're going to turn this one on. We're at the point where we're making our lives a lot better for us. But we're doing it at the expense of everything going forward. We have many, many ways to fix this problem. The question is, are we going to do it fast enough? What we know at the moment is we're driving this out of control and the ocean's chemistry is changing really rapidly, scarily fast. 
When we put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, it doesn't all stay there. Between a third and a half gets absorbed by the oceans. The CO2 reacts with water to form something called carbonic acid. And each year the ocean becomes more and more acidic. If you want to know what that does, get a seashell and drop it in, you know, a glass of vinegar. A whole variety of creatures will simply dissolve into the acid ocean that we have created.